During interphase, each chromosome replicates, resulting in two genetically identical sister chromatids, which remain attached to their centromeres. During prophase one, each replicated chromosome matches up with another chromosome of the same size and gene. This is called a homologous chromosome. As demonstrated here, the white chromosome is represented as maternal and the red is paternal. The crossing over recombination occurs here. In metaphase one, chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell in pairs. Spindle fibers attach at each centromere. Homologous pairs line up independently. This is when crossover or recombination comes into play. Homologous chromosomes come together to share DNA between sister chromatids. In anaphase 1, spindle fibers pull chromosomes toward the poles, or either side of the cell. Sister chromatids stay attached and homologous chromosomes move to opposite poles. Contrary to mitosis, chromosomes are individual instead of in pairs. Telophase is the end of the first cell division. The two homologous chromosomes separate, splitting the cytoplasm and forming two new daughter cells. Each new cell has a haploid of the parent chromosomes. Cytokinesis. This phase occurs simultaneously with telophase 1. It helps to form two new daughter cells by completely splitting the cell. In prophase 2, each daughter cell forms a spindle and the double-stranded chromosomes move toward the center. Taking place in metaphase 2, chromosomes are once again positioned down the middle, individually this time, rather than connected in pairs. During anaphase 2, the centromeres of sister chromatids separate. Sister chromatids of each pair then move to opposite poles as individual chromatids. Reaching the end of meiosis, telophase 2 prepares the already replicated chromosomes to split for a second time. To complete meiosis, cytokinesis completely splits the chromosomes into four new daughter cells, each one unique.